God in the highest. We are reading out of Isaiah today, chapter 40, where we've been through all of Advent. And if you have your Bibles, uh, turn to chapter 40, verse 12. We're going to read this long text today, verses, uh, uh, chapter 40, verses 12 through 26. Uh, and I have two of the Linsenmeyers with me today. And so this is Emma and Kate, and so they're going to be doing our reading today, but uh, I'm going to cue you, and you're going to read with me, uh, and uh, I'll set you up on verse, in verse 18, verse 21, and verse 26 is where we're going to read. And so in response to the reverence we have in our heart, for the Word of God, let's stand as the Linsenmeyers begin. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand, and marked off the dust with a span, and closed the dust, and marked off the heavens with a span, and closed the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales, and the hills in a balance? Who has measured the spirit of the Lord, or what man shows him his counsel? Whom did he consult, and who made him understand? And who taught him the path of justice, and taught him knowledge, and showed him the way of understanding? Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket, and are accounted as the dust on the scales. Behold, he takes up the coastlands like fine dust. Lebanon would not suffice for fuel, nor are its beasts enough for a burnt offering. All the nations are as nothing before him. They are accounted by him as less than nothing and emptiness. To whom, to whom then will you liken God, or what likeness compare with him? An idol? A craftsman casts it, and a goldsmith overlays it with gold, and casts for it silver chains. He who is too impoverished for an offering chooses wood that will not rot. He seeks out a skillful craftsman to set up an idol that will not move. Do you, do you not, not hear? know? Do you, do you not, not hear? hear? Has, Has it, it not, not been, been told you from, from the beginning? beginning? Have you, Have you not, not understood, understood from, from the, the foundations, foundations of, of the earth? earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain who stretches and spreads them like a tent to dwell in. Who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me that I should be like him, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see, who created these? He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Thank you. If you would be seated. Would you take the person's hand or the one next to you as we pray? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, I want to visit with you today about this. Uh, this is just such an amazing text, and I just think it's, uh, it's just a phenomenal thing to think about the glory of God. And we heard the choir sing uh, about the glory of God. and, and it's just, it's amazing. It's just absolutely amazing. It talks in the, in the Bible about heavens, and that word appears in the Bible 210 times, and the word heaven appears 498 times. This is in the ESV, the English Standard Version. And so this is, this is the heavens versus heaven. There's a little distinction there. Heavens is the, the canopy, the space. And it's just the heavens are so, it is so unbelievable. We begin the Bible with that, that famous phrase, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And if you believe that, everything is possible in the Bible. 
If you don't stumble at that place, if there's a creator God created everything, then the miracles, the things that happen, it's, it's not anything that we stumble upon. But when you start thinking about this, it's just, it's just unbelievable what this is like. It's, uh, uh, it's sad that there are 250 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and there are 125 galaxies in the universe. 125 galaxies. The Milky Way is one of those. 125 billion galaxies in the universe. They estimate the number of stars to be 10 billion trillion. 10 billion trillion. Finally, I found a number that's bigger than the United States national debt. <laughs> How can you possibly wrap your minds around that? That's what the study of astrophysics is about. It's that chemistry and physics, and it's trying to understand the life and the creation and the death of stars and planets and, and, and nebulae and all of those kinds of things. It's, it's an amazing study. I think maybe this... I could talk about this, but sometimes a picture maybe is worth a thousand words. So here we go. Watch this. This is a great clip here. 210 seconds. And one second's gone.
to show that, and it's just like, it's mind-blowing. And that's why my, my tongue-in-cheek response is, well, I guess the next election really doesn't matter that much, does it? You need a sense of perspective. When you lose your perspective and you lose your perception, then things get really funky. We've got to go back to the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Heavens and the earth. Isaiah is picking up on some of the concepts of the earth here, and he talks about, first he talks about water. And with that, you think of how unique earth is because we're the only folks that have water in any abundance. Other places, they've never been able to find water like they do here on our, on our planet. And you think about those of us that are concerned about cleaning, uh, and we think about dust, and we don't like the dust. Let me give you a little different way to look at dust. Dust goes 17 miles up above our earth. When the light hits the dust, there is a refraction, and light is, hits that dust, particles, and we see blue. When you go beyond the 17 miles, there's no dust, and that's why it's dark. So dust gives us color. And when it rains, each drop of, of each droplet of water has eight million little droplets within, all surrounded by a piece of dust. And so without dust, we couldn't have rain. It wouldn't work. We couldn't live without dust. Now, now, so those of you that want the dust buster, be careful. The dust is our friend. I just point that out, okay? So you think about this and you think about about all of the things that go into this marvelous earth that we're in, that God created the heavens, God also created the earth. That God is big and cosmic, but God is also small, if you think in, in those terms. Think in terms of what the ozone is, you know, that ozone layer, a layer whereas the dust goes 17 miles, ozone goes 40 miles up and above. And what the ozone does is that it blocks the ultraviolet long rays so that when it hits the earth, it's blocked out. But the shorter rays come, and that's what burns up the algae. If those ultraviolet rays did not burn up the algae, then it would take over the seas and the water and everything would, would be destroyed. We couldn't have life as we know it. And so we think about all of the different capacities that, that we have. We think of, about the atmosphere and how it is uh, that things are just, just happen to have been created in this way that 78% of the atmosphere is nitrogen and 21% is oxygen and there's 1% of trace elements. And you think about that, 78, 20, 21, and 1. And then you think that, that if it were changed, we couldn't exist as, as we know it. it just, did it just happen or did God create the heavens and the earth with a divine intent and mind. And with that creation then is this amazing thing. And I learned this when I was in my, church, in my first church out in Visai. And the farmers always wanted snow. Why do you want snow? Because snow is the, what they call the poor man's fertilizer. That's how they get the nitrogen into the soil is through two things. One is through snow. The other is through the lightning. Did you know the lightning puts nitrogen into the soil? So God does these things in amazing ways. We think about how there are all kinds of things that take place in our world. Have you been looking at how beautiful the moon has looked, the full moon this week? And people that work in medical facilities will tell you there's something that happens when the moon is full. That there's something just happens. Uh, but the moon, not only does it reflect the light of the sun, but also it's a shield and protects the earth from some of the meteorites that would have struck us. It's an amazing thing. Uh, the moon also has this gravitational, creates this gravitational pull that aerates our oceans. And so there is a tide that is created. If we did not have the moon that is located just at the right distance between us and the sun, if we did not have the moon where it's positioned, the gravitational pull would not work. But 
it just so happened, I guess. And so we're able to have the oceans cleansed by the tide. If we did not have that tide, the oceans would just be teeming of, of just trash. It just w- would be, it would be awful. Life could not be sustained. And also, this aeration then creates oxygen and it creates the plankton. The plankton is the very basis of the food chain. And so, this is the way that life is formed. It comes through this. And so, we think of the moon and we think of the, the, the stars, and we think of the sun, and the right distance, and everything's just at the right distance. And we think of the axis of the earth at 23 degrees. If it were a different tilt, if it were just a, a degree or two different, then we would burn up or we would freeze. But it's just it's like a chicken on a spit, and it's just at the right angle. It's amazing. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Don't bow down to a block of wood, Isaiah is saying. That is, that's beyond comprehension. But what happens here, this is just with, with the earth. We're not talking about all of these other things dealing with astrophysics. And we're not even talking about the human body, which I think is amazing. Isaiah picks up on a couple of these metaphors. One is about your hearing. What's wrong with your hearing? Have you not heard? Do you not know? What's the matter with your brain? Have you, not, have you not known? Have you not heard? And have you not seen? I don't know how many of you men have been told by your wives that you need to go see an audiologist. I was told that. I went to see the audiologist. He said, your hearing's fine. I had another problem then. You go back to your wife and tell my hearing's fine. Well, then you're not paying attention to me. Okay, so we need to go see somebody else. So that's a different matter. (laughs) But you think about this. You think about, I have cataract surgery. I had the lens implant. It is amazing. I could go, not Cadillac, but cataract sales. I could, oh man, I love these things. You know, I can see you and I can read. Uh, I have monovision. How do they do that? I, the, of everything, anatomically speaking, I think the eye is the most amazing. How can we see? And how can it send signals to the brain like it does? I don't know. Same thing with hearing. How can this happen? I don't know about you, but I am so in wonder that I am like, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm like a child. Did you know I'm a grandfather? I've been waiting to pull this up on the screen here. So this is Logan, this is yesterday, and she's discovered the joy of, I guess this is whipped cream on her pancakes. And look at the expression on her face. That's the way I feel about all of this, just, are you kidding me? The heavens and the earth, how is this possible? It's to the glory of God. And when I read through this stuff, and I was like, I, it, just, it just takes me to a place of worship. And that's what Isaiah is saying, is that how can you worship a tree? You cut it down, and you build the fire with it, and then you make it into a block of wood, and maybe you carve it into, you know, a beaver or something, and then you fall down, and you worship it like you created the heavens and the earth, and and you're going to worship that? You made it with it. It can't move. It can't walk. It can't talk. It can't do anything. It's just, how could you do that? That's foolishness. The glory of God is revealed in the heavens and the earth, and we see that. And so, as you... Faith and science are not in opposition. Uh, There's often been that connection, that contention, and there's been unfortunate things that have happened, but boy, the more you know about about faith and the more you know about about science, they're not at war. They're not at odds. We've we've misunderstood in various ways, and so we can put this together in a different different way and explain it, not without trying to be argumentative, but to say, no, my worldview begins with Genesis 1-1, in the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. And with that, everything is possible. I want to say that there is a second glory, and this is what is so exciting about Advent season. He's red-lettered, isn't he? The glory of Jesus. 
Uh, that's who we worship. We don't worship a block of wood. We don't worship money. We don't worship other things, the great things that God has created. But we don't worship created things. We worship the Creator. And that's so very important. And so the glory of Jesus, talking about amazing things. How could the God who made the heavens and the earth come to us in such a way? It's just amazing. This is what John says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through Him, yet the world did not know Him. He came to His own, and His own people did not receive Him. But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This great God has come in this great way to let us know that we don't have to live in despair, that we don't have to live with fear and anxiety, that we don't have to worry, but that we as children of God have an inheritance that's far beyond anything that the eye could see, the ear hear, the mind imagine. We have an incredible gift from this one who came. Jesus, God himself, became a human being so that we might know him. And so Isaiah asked these three questions. To whom then will you compare me? It's not anything you're going to make with your hands. It's not anything that's of the created order that you're going to fall and worship. Who are you going to compare with God? There is no comparison. And he asked the question, it's rhetorical. Have you not known? Have you not heard? And there are so many people that have never known, that have never heard this message, this message of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ, how He has come so that we might become the children of God. What an incredible gift, what incredible good news that we have to share with others. And finally, He says, think and hear and see. And this maybe is the message that we need to take home with us today, because Isaiah says, lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. And you know, there's something that changes when you look up instead of looking down. And when you look up, you're filled with optimism and with hope. I don't know what the doctor's going to say. I don't know what the economy's going to say. I don't know what your job situation is. I don't know your family relationships. I don't know what's going to happen. But I just tell you, don't look down and don't worship a block of wood. Look up. Remember who you are. Consider the heavens. Consider heaven. Consider the earth and all that God has made to His glory and the glory of Jesus is incomparable. We can't comprehend it. It is so good. It is so rich. And to this, we are given the invitation to become children of God. What a glorious gift. What can I give you for Christmas? Good news. You are loved. Just as you are. Nothing you need to change. You're loved by God, the Creator a heaven and earth. And by the Word who became flesh and dwelt among us, that we might behold His glory. And with this, we're able to say, 
For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. My friends, I will see you